this evening we're going to talk about a different type of antichrist. You guys saw the thumbnail. Before we get into that, if you have your Bibles, I'm in Genesis, Genesis like 15, 16 to 22, because we have to go back to the beginning to truly understand what I'm going to reference. And this is, it starts with Abraham and Sarah. So if you guys have your Bibles, that's where I'm at to kind of explain what's going on. But in a nutshell, God had promised Abraham and Sarah that they, they were going to have a child. Abraham and Sarah were like, oh, we're not going to have a child. We're too old. They were old. They were like in their hundreds or two hundreds. Uh, I can't hundreds. remember their exact. Yeah, they were old. But, you know, God told them, hey, it was a promise, a, a covenant with Abraham that you're going to have a child. And that child would be uh, named Isaac. So a few years went past and it, it seems that they got impatient or their faith was tested. So Sarah told her husband, Abraham, hey, get with the handmaiden and we'll have a child that way. So, so they did. And they had a child with uh, Hagar and his name was Ishmael. Uh, a lot of people look at it as this child was born out of sin. I'm not sure if that's actually scriptural. My translation is, is that they either got impatient or there was a lack of faith or a lack of communication on how exactly it was going to happen. But shortly thereafter, I think within one or two years, she actually got pregnant and they had a son, natural childbirth, who was Isaac. It's a really, really fascinating story. You know, Ishmael, for you guys to understand who he is and, and what had happened, is essentially Prophet Muhammad is tied to Ishmael. That's the bloodline. So you have the Islamic religion that comes from that bloodline, and then you have Christ that came from the other bloodline. So it's for me, it's fascinating because my perception on it is that Satan got to Sarah. This was one of Satan's, another attempt to divide and try to stop the birth of Christ because essentially Sarah said, hey, look, you know, get with, uh, get with her and we'll have a son that way. And if he would have, if they would have just waited, they would have had Isaac through natural childbirth in that whole other massive religion that I feel like is the work of the deceiver would have not have happened. Does that make sense? Watchful. Oh, oh yeah, it makes perfect sense. You know, and it's interesting because you see a lot of these these patterns in the scripture, these types and shadows. You could even argue that it's similar to Cain and Abel. It is uh, similar to Abel. Hagar and their son, Ishmael. Abraham pretty much kicked them out of the house, if I understand things correctly. They banished them mm -hmm. and sent them out into the desert. And it was just Sarah, Isaac, and Abraham. Ishmael became the father of 12 sons who founded all the Arab tribes in the Islamic tradition. It's fascinating to me how this actually played out. Because if you look 20 generations down when it came to Isaac, that's where you have Jacob and Christ. Eventually, they trusted God or had faith again, and that one child through natural childbirth happened just as God had promised. So, and you can see them talking about this later in the book of Genesis as Abraham took his one and only son, as God had instructed him, up to the top of the mountain for a blood sacrifice. I found it interesting that in Genesis, they, God referenced, take your one son, not both of your sons. So yeah. this leads me into the Islamic Antichrist. Muhammad, he had had a vision. He's kind of the founder, the prophet of this so-called religion. He said that he had a visitation from Gabriel, the angel. My take is it was Satan, the deceiver, the angel of light, because everything that they say in the Quran is like the polar opposite and matches to the T, the counterfeit of the Bible. There's so many things that are in correlation. The Mahdi, which is their Messiah that comes back, lines up and sounds just like the Antichrist listed in Daniel and Revelation. And I'll go into some details with this. For me, it's fascinating. And even in the Quran, they have Jesus as the Mahdi's kind of their partner. But they believe that Jesus was just a prophet, that he was not the son of God. It, Jesus is kind of their assistant to their Messiah, the Mahdi. 
Yeah, you know, it's one category I, I haven't spent a whole lot of time in and kind of kicking myself for that. It's only very recently that I've even started considering uh, Islam as being part of the one of the beast systems. But it's making more and more sense the more I hear about it. Uh, I've looked into a couple of things, found a couple of things that were fraudulent. Uh, I know there was a big thing about their headbands being the key, chi, key, key kashi stigma. Um, I'm still looking symbols. into that. It's, yeah, the Greek symbols. It seems like some of that might have been made up for uh, effects, uh, but it, it doesn't surprise me if they're not involved because it's one of the fastest growing religions. It is. And giving, given their mentality for violence, I can definitely see a scenario. And, and I've heard them outright talk about saying that when the time comes, they're going to come to your door, they're going to knock on it, and you're going to have a choice. Either serve, the, serve Allah or die. Yeah. And that to me sounds a lot like that second beast who says you can't buy, sell or trade unless you serve their God, their religion, their doctrine. And it sounds like it has deadly consequences. That sounds to me like a great tribulation. If, and, and given the people that have come across our border, given, given the fighting age men and the nationalities and their associations that have come across the borders, it's becoming more and more a reality. And that's really where my attention is. So there seems like there's something to it. That's for sure. So here's what I also find interesting is that, you know, the Mahdi, their Messiah, they believe, you know, I know I've already said this, but they believe that Jesus walked the earth. They just don't mm -hmm. believe he's the son of God. They believe he's a prophet and he is, kind of the assistant to the Mahdi. So what's interesting to me is, and if you remember in Revelation, they talk about the false prophet will have a mouth of a dragon, but appear like the lamb. So that's where you got that right there. And like you said, the Islam being the fastest growing religion, you can see it growing in every country. Just look at London, or you can even look in our own town. The Islamic culture, they're allowed to pray in the streets. I mean, they can literally stop traffic. And I think that mm -hmm. the freedom of religion is a fantastic thing, but it's it's not equal balanced. You have one yeah. person on the Christian side that is praying in public with the Bible, and they will literally arrest him. Or yeah. you have an, an entire city that can pray on their knees in the middle of the streets and shut down the city and they just allow it. So you can see how there is a biased issue. One reason to explain why there's such a propensity of violence in their culture is that their Messiah, the Mahdi, will not appear until there is like world chaos. Their beliefs is that he will not show up until there's massive turmoil. What I find interesting as well is in their Quran, their God that they call Allah, says that their Antichrist, not the Antichrist from our Bible, their Antichrist will be someone that calls himself the King of Kings. Hmm. Imagine, Think about that. Where have we heard that before? Isn't that, <laughs> what, isn't that one of the titles for Jesus, King of Kings oh, yeah. and Lord it's, of Lords? The thing when it comes to it, and I've spent a lot of time reading the Quran and comparing it is almost identical in several, several fashions. It is almost a mirror image, a, a mirror counterfeit. So what you have is Muhammad, when he went into the cave and he had what he called Gabriel the angel come and visit him and give him all his instructions that was a, supposed to be a message from God. It is my belief, just like with some folks we've had on previous interviews that they were deceived by the spirit. I think right. he was literally deceived by Satan because everything is an absolute counterfeit of Christianity. If you look at it in detail, it is literally a counterfeit. And just like he said, in their religion, they will get to a point where they will force you to convert or they will cut off your head. And I know that yeah. in the Bible, it talks about how the saints are martyred uh, the same way. I just find that fascinating. It's, it's something that I find interesting. And Prophet Muhammad said there would be, in their Quran, said there'll be 12 kings that support their caliphate. And that their Messiah, the Mahdi, will rule for seven years and set a peace covenant with many. 
Where have we heard that before? Yeah, Daniel, right? Fascinating, though, that there's so much correlation. Their Messiah, the, the Mahdi, seven years, and their Temple Mount, uh, the Dome of the Rock, is said to be on top of the old temple. Is that how you understand it? Yes. The first temple that was knocked down? So, sort of. There's, there's new archaeology that's coming out that suggests that... Uh, the temple that was destroyed, that Jesus prophesied would be destroyed, where there's not stone left on top of it, was actually down the hill a little ways because there's no water source on top of the, the temple mount right now. But in order for there to be sacrifices, you have to have a water source. So they started digging down by a water source, and they've been finding old ruins uh, that suggest that the temple's actually a little bit further down. What I find interesting is it talks about in the Quran that their Mahdi is going to rule there in Jerusalem on the Temple Mount, which is the Dome of the Rock. If, if like you said, if archaeology is correct, and that's exactly where the old temple was. What, but what I find fascinating is this Mahdi is going to claim to be God. So that could be the the desolation. That was kind of where I yeah. was going with that. So yeah. And that's probably the first time that I've actually I could actually see that becoming a reality, because uh, so often the narrative today is that the Jews are going to build their their temple. That's going to be the third temple, and someone's going to go into that. It actually makes more sense to me that there's a, yeah. there's already an existing it's already temple. a temple there. Yeah, that someone's going to go in and say this is the God that you will serve, and then that's where that forehead and mark comes in as to where you need to believe this or else, and you need to prove that you believe this or else you're off with your head. Yeah, so as I've been studying this, it makes more and more sense. And to tie it together with Charles, Charles converted to Islam in 2004. His bloodline goes back to the Muslim culture. If you look into his mother, they have a lot of ties to Islam. So yeah. it very well could be, guys. It could be, be it could be both of what we're talking about because he checks all the boxes. If you really look at behind the scenes, and we've already gone into this in detail when it comes to Charles, but watch some of Tim Cohen stuff. Everybody in this world of any power, they, they, they answer to him, just like Klaus Schwab does of the WEF. That man holds a lot more power than what a lot of folks understand. But back to what we were talking about, their Messiah, the Mahdi, just like we just mentioned, will claim to be God in their temple that's already built on top of the old temple. So there no needs to be no other third temple built because it's already there. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a lot of people in here saying we are the temple. So I agree. That's why I never thought that there was going to be a third temple because scripturally we are the temple. Jesus, that's, that was the accusation brought against him because he said this temple would be torn down and built up or and he would rebuild it again in three days. Uh, my understanding is there was never going to be another temple after that because as the body of Christ, we are the temple. Jesus is the cornerstone. We're stones built on top of him. So I've always had an issue with this narrative about the third temple being built. However, what we're talking about right now where there's an existing temple on the temple mounts with, you know, looking at this particular religion, I'm willing to reconsider that 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 narrative that talks about someone going into the temple and declaring themselves God. In my mind... I'm still, we're still considering this, but in my mind, as the temple, because, you know, our bodies are the temple, our mind is the temple, that's where you retain God in your knowledge. Somebody coming into, you know, how does a man sit in your mind? Um, and the only way I could see that as being a possibility is if it's some kind of a doctrine or religion to where you have something, somebody trying to convince you to believe that someone else is God. That was my understanding of it. However, the, the angle that we're considering today, we're not necessarily saying we agree with this. We're just considering yeah. it as a possibility. We're speculating. You know, we all stand approved. Yeah, we're just speculating. We all stand approved before God, and you know we're we're told to study. This is this is a process of studying. You've got to theorize and, and consider things and put them under scrutiny to determine if they hold water or if they're just crap. Yeah, and uh, we like to speculate with you guys because. We really enjoy the feedback from folks. It, it really yeah. gets us thinking. Yeah, I saw a comment in here that says, uh, no, that's not accurate. In Islam, no one can claim to be God. Well, what it is, is they, in Islam, they do not believe there is a son of God. 
they do believe, though, that there is a Messiah that is, you know, the prophet, their Messiah is acting under God's power. And in Islam, they also believe Jesus comes back from heaven to serve their Messiah, the Mahdi, and ends up yes. telling everybody, uh, their version is that when he comes back from heaven, he tells everybody that he didn't die on the cross, that it was all a sham, and they all need to listen uh, to the Mahdi. And that's when they'll go to the temple in Jerusalem and claim to be God. Now, this is just my theory. This is just me um, studying this stuff for quite some time. It doesn't mean that I'm right. But there's just a lot of clues. There's a lot. Well, of clues. and we're not. And just to be clear, we're not saying this is what it is. This is literally just a consideration of what if. So this is a theory. This is not teaching as this. This is doctrine. Just want to make that very clear that we're we're exploring all the possibilities and seeing which ones work and which ones don't. And you know, like someone said, there could be a physical third temple. There could be. We don't know. Yeah. Though there is a lot of. Uh, evidence that the Dome of the Rock was built on the location of the previous temple. Whether that's 100% true, it's very difficult to say because they won't let them dig around there and, and do any archaeology. They yeah. they prevent it. It's, um, it's considered their holy place. So there's a lot going back and forth on each side. But the... The moral of the story with me is what I found fascinating is where it started back with Abraham and Sarah. This was Satan's attempt yet again. Very similar to Adam and Eve in the garden. Satan yet again deceiving the wife, Sarah. And yeah. she got impatient or a lack of faith and told Abraham, hey, have a son with our handmaiden. And God told them that they were going to have a son. They just had to have faith and be patient because Isaac came, but they didn't. And there you have, you have Ishmael, which branched yeah. off. I mean, we're guys, we're talking about a third of the population on the planet came from that fatal error. I mean, a, I can't even imagine where we would be uh, today as far as everything that is happening if that one life-changing decision wasn't made. Just think about that just for a second. It was probably one of the most important decisions uh, mankind has made other than, you know, uh, them eating the fruit from the tree of knowledge and just yeah. just my two cents on it. Well, and I think it's interesting, the parallels with the types and shadows, again, going back to Cain and Abel, you know, Ishmael and Isaac, and, you know, just, it seems like it's a pattern that's repeating. You could even argue that the uh, the two beasts could fall within that pattern too. It's just like, uh, that's, there's something to that when you're studying the scripture to, to look at the, the patterns of things before in order to inform the current patterns. Um, I, I, I say this quite often that there's a lot you can learn from the, the Fibonacci sequence to where yes. the Fibonacci sequence is called, called the God pattern. We use it in, in all kinds of math. They use it in trading, but it's, it's a pattern that's built on the past. So it's the, the future is a product of the past, the, the, the current and the past. Uh, look up the Fibonacci sequence if you want, want to know what it is, but I'm reminded of that when I'm looking at, things that have happened in the scripture that looks like something that's happening right now. And if, if you want to know more, so for instance, a good example is the 12 disciples. Jesus um, picked 12 disciples to help him build his church, to help him build the temple in order to record his life, imitate him, so that was the start of his ministry. And then you could draw a parallel to that with 144,000 because you have that number of 12 again, but it's scaled up. You have 12,000 from each of the 12 tribes. You could draw a conclusion in order to theorize, could they have a similar purpose as the first 12? You know, could, you know, maybe they don't get raptured up into heaven like we think. Maybe there's, maybe there's a massive movement to where, 
they're they're doing something similar to the first twelve apostles. 